So I think particularly in COVID, this has been an interesting question because when the pandemic hit, lockdown happened, the shift came, first of all, to logistics. What does this mean? How is this going to affect our business? How are we going to respond to it? And it was very much a strategic operational response, followed pretty quickly after that with a well-being conversation. And now the conversations are getting a little bit more extended going, well, okay, this is indefinite. Uh, we're going to have to make some long-term decisions about how we run the business. How does that affect our operations? And then how does it affect our culture? Now, if you have a leadership team uh, that is only focused on strategy and logistics, you're missing half the piece of the puzzle. So if you are not on the executive team or you're a member of it and don't necessarily have positional authority on it, this is what you can do. So this is a little bit of influencing up um, strategies. The first one is in any sort of case for, hey, you should be paying more attention to culture, uh, always couch your suggestions in the language that is important to them. This is a general influence principle in, uh, across the board, whatever the topic. Always use language that is meaningful to the person you want to influence. In this case, if you have an executive team that is obsessed with uh, results and operations, talk about culture through that lens. Um, you want to be using things like results, metrics, productivity, and outcomes in any conversation around culture. Um, so here's an example of how you might do it. Um, and it's about reading an article. <laughs> here's one way to influence. It's a little surreptitious, slightly indirect. Um, and you could say something to one or more of them saying, I read this article on Gallup that shows increases in, engage in engagement, employee engagement result in two and a half times revenue growth. That's quite extraordinary. Two and a half times revenue growth and 40% less churn just by boosting employee engagement statistics. That's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? It's like if we just spend a little bit of effort on employee engagement, we could increase our revenue two and a half times and reduce turnover by 40%, by 40%. Wow. Those are kind of interesting statistics that a uh, strategic, uh, um, logistically focused executive team would be interested in. Uh, so you make a suggestion. I think if we focused a little bit more on engagement and culture, we could get some of that goodness. <laughs> we could get a huge return. Um, and even this, here's another statistic that you could use. Showing appreciation results in 69% of employees working harder. That's a no cost, virtually no time strategy to increase productivity. So I think by sharing those kinds of data points is really useful to help influence. Now, data is just one point, stories are another. So if you're going to be influencing, you need both left brain, which is facts, statistics, and right brain, which are stories. And so what you want to couple this is a story about an organization that spent a lot of time on logistics and then switched to focusing on employee engagement and what their results were. Um, so you might have to do a little groundwork with that in terms of your influencing. So that is a big picture overview of how you want to help try and steer the ship to pay attention to some of the culture issues. The other thing I would keep in mind too is to talk about the Pareto's principle, you know, Meaning that if you spend 20% of your time on culture and people engagement strategies, it'll give or give 80% return on effort and produce 80% of the results that you're after. Uh, so it doesn't need to be 50% culture and 50% strategy in terms of time spent on these things. A little bit means a big difference. Spending no time on culture and people will create 80% of your problems. 